Magandat makulay na araw muli, minamahal ko mga kabarangay. Ako po inyong kaibigan Simpapawid, ang inyong kuya nono, inyong direct rene. Dito po sa ating ikwento mo. At sa araw na ito ay uh, maganda pong ating uh, magiging ikwento mo. Ito po isang uh, talakayan. Kasama po ang uh, general manager ng New Zealand National Basketball League na si Justin Nelson. At uh, alamin natin ang kanyang mga informasyon at ang kanyang mga saluobin tungkol po sa bagong draft ng New Zealand National Basketball League. At kasama po rin po natin dito ay ilan mga coaches at ang kaibigan natin si Gerald Grana, isang sports writer sa Pilipinas. Kaya ito po ang ating zoomustahan with uh, Justin Nelson. Uh, an informative session with Justin because he has uh, information that would be beneficial to the Filipinos who are fond of playing basketball. Uh, for the benefit of uh, Justin, we have some good tall players, but they are playing now in the Philippines. They played here. Uh, we have the Magdenburg brothers. They are like 6'5", six, 6'6 six, six guys who are playing for a number one uh, collegiate league. And then we have uh, two others from uh, Wellington who are also playing in the collegiate league. I don't know if they're back in New Zealand, but uh, yeah. So probably for the benefit of uh, our uh, coaches and then our uh, uh, viewers, uh, could you please uh, explain to us, uh, Justin, what is the new format and this program that you have for the New Zealand National Basketball League? Yeah, th thank you, Renee. Um and thanks for having me. I think the first thing um, to to talk about is when um, th this global pandemic um, started, uh, we were very, very close to starting our our original season. and the the NZNBL had made enormous um, steps forward in two thousand and nineteen, as I'm sure that that many of you um, had seen. And we, we had um, a lot of really big, encouraging things coming for 2020. And then everything just stopped, which, which is the same the world over. But we recognised very early that if we were to come back and play um, some level of competition in, in 2020, which is important for our broadcasters, it's important for our, our sponsors, it's important to get our players back into work, it's important for our fans we had to do something different. If we had have come back and tried to do something the same, if we, had to, if we tried to be normal, it wouldn't have worked. The, the league wouldn't survive, our teams wouldn't survive, and the chances are that the league may not have come back in 2021. So we had to come up with something different. We had to come up with something that um, worked with the very changed financial status of our teams. Most of them had had their revenue cut by more than 90%, more than 90%. Wow. So it's a very big change. We had to adapt and what we came up with was a concept that had all of our teams in one city, which will be Auckland, which was announced um, during the week. We'll be there for six weeks. We'll play games five nights a week, two games every night, which is very exciting for us because it's never been done before. Um, the next thing that we had to do is we had to understand what our teams needed. And the two big things that came out from our teams was they needed access to a player pool because some of our smaller regions didn't have enough players in their local area who could play in the league or get away from home for six weeks into another city, remembering that they quite often have imports come from other parts of the world. So all of those imports are gone. So some of our teams needed access to a bigger player pool to select players from. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that for the first time ever, for the little money that our teams do have, they are all contributing exactly the same amount. In the past, we had teams spend this and we had teams spend this. Okay. And it was a very uneven competition, very, very much like this. Teams here, teams here. Yeah. Because of what had happened and the money that was taken out of the teams, the lost revenue, we had to come up with a figure 
that our teams could afford, which is very, very low, but they all pay the same. Nobody pays more, nobody pays less. And the league is now paying for the greater proportion of putting this league on. The league will spend, uh, will pay about 90% of the money to put this league on. That's never been done before, ever. Mm -hmm. We're paying a lot of payments to players. We're paying for venue, we're paying for travel, we're paying for accommodation, we're paying for food. So we had to make sure that it was very balanced and equal. Who's that? And that's how the draft came about. That's how the whole concept of the player draft uh, happened. And since then, what has happened since we announced the competition last week is very surreal. Um, we thought people would be interested in the draft. That interest is off the charts. It's become the big talking point. So many people are looking forward to this whole new concept that's never been done before, um, that is very, very different. But it all came about from the start because we had to change. We had to adapt if we wanted to play some level of basketball in 2020. And that's what happened. So uh, this one, uh, the draft is uh, coming up soon, uh, right, uh, Justin? Uh, Yep, player registrations open up on Monday, May 25. Those registrations will stay open until June the 5th. Any player who wants to be considered for the draft uh, or to be selected by a team must register. If you don't register, you can't be drafted. So that's the first, uh, the first step is to, to register. Uh, offline, two, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks to register. Two weeks, weeks to, to register. Monday, Monday, May twenty-five to Friday, June five. Okay. Oh, uh, we have another coach. Uh, coach Ariel is joining us also. Uh, coach Ariel, this is uh, Justin, the general manager of the New Zealand National Basketball League. Uh, Justin, there have been some uh, Filipino coaches or some parents were saying. When they register, so they go into a pool to, 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 do, to do a tryout, right? Is it like a tryout? No, what it is, is they go, into, they, they go into a draft pool. So all the names will go into this list, and that's the list that the coaches will use to select players, to draft players. Ah, okay. Once a player has registered, we'll send them an email and we'll invite them if they want to. They don't have to. If they want to supply us with any vision or highlights, they can do that. They can send us those links, and then we send that to every team. Oh, okay. So before the draft actually happens, the, the, the coaches can go in and have a little bit of a look at players that they may not know. Um, but that's up to the player. If the player wants to do that, they can do that. Now, here's the key thing that people need to remember because of the global situation that we're in. Anybody who currently is in New Zealand, whether they're a New Zealand citizen, whether they're uh, a permanent resident, whether they're an international visitor, if they're in New Zealand right now, they can register. Oh, okay. Anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody. Doesn't matter what nationality you are. If you're in New Zealand right now, you can register. If you're not in New Zealand, if you're somewhere else around the world, you have to be a Kiwi resident, a Kiwi citizen to get back into the country or you have to be the partner of a Kiwi um, citizen to get back into the country. If you haven't got that, the government won't let you back into the country right now. Is there an age gap uh, for this, uh, Justin? Um, you know, uh, of course, it's, it's athletic, so you have to be agile. And, but is there like an... How, how young can, can a player join or how old? So the rules of our competition in the NBL um, for a number of years now is you have to be over, you have to be 15 years of age or over to play in the NBL. And that's the same every year. If you're under 18 and you get drafted to a team, you will need to get a form signed by your parent or guardian you'll need to get that in order to play. But that's the same rule as it is every year. So it's no different. Mm -hmm. 
Now, uh, are there uh, questions that our coaches or uh, Gerald would like to ask uh, Justin? Uh, he is here to share information about this is a very uh, unique uh, format, and and I think it's a it's a it's a gateway to uh, to young basketball players who would like to step up and move on to you know start with this uh, with this draft. Anyone would like to ask a question? Hey, uh, uh, yes, I'd like to know. Uh, um, is the is the New Zealand uh, league designed like a play for pay league or is it like a collegiate league? Because it's it has two different setups in terms of restriction. So a number of our players are paid. There'll be a number of players in the competition this um, uh, this year that will be paid, but it is also open to amateurs. So we have an amateur player agreement. The league has an amateur player agreement that anyone who is an amateur or who wants to protect their college status, so they're not allowed to get any money. Uh, we have a form that states that they get no money, that they're an amateur, and they can sign that form. And that's effectively their waiver to say they're an amateur. But there are players in our league who get paid, yes. Any, any other question? Oh, I have a question before uh, the coaches would ask. Uh, uh, is, the, is the venue uh, set already or you're still looking for the venue for the, for the games? The venue um, has been selected. Um, it'll be in Auckland and we'll announce that venue on Monday or Tuesday coming up, I think. But it, it'll be one of the major venues in Auckland. Okay. And that's... Uh, 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 two games every day. That, it, it, that's what you're saying. Yeah. We play two games per night mm -hmm. for five nights a week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, 5.30 and 7.30 New Zealand time, okay. p.m. Yeah. Right. So that would be in, in Philippines, that would be 1.30 and 3.30 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. everybody, everybody for six weeks, five days a week, they get every afternoon off work. <laughs> because this will be uh, broadcasted, uh, Justin, right? It's streamed. Uh, so that's the so that's the other thing. On Monday, um, so two days from today, we will announce globally that there will be a pay per view uh, platform channel. Um, and we've kept it very, very cheap. Um, anybody around the world, anyone, will be able to uh, register and buy a season pass mm -hmm. for 56 games. Um, we've kept it very, very low cost. Uh, and anybody from around the world will be able to watch this competition. Very exciting. First time ever. Yeah, very good. Very good. Uh, Coach Ariel, do you have uh, any question, uh, Coach Ariel, that you would like to ask uh, Justin? <laughs> or uh, any, any of other uh, coaches, uh, Pastor Jojo, uh, Wayne, uh, do you have any questions? Or Gerald, do you have some questions uh, for Justin? Uh, uh, Justin, I also would like to know, um, so your, one of the goals is to widen the player pool, correct? Sorry, one of the things for the player pool, I just missed that. One of the... To widen. To widen, to widen the player pool. Yeah, I, I think um, for us, we know that uh, um, <coughs> 84 players, 84 will, will be drafted. But we're happy for that player pool to be 200, 300, 500, 1,000. Um, because I think there's a little bit of... A little bit of a fairy tale, a little bit of nostalgia. Um, I come from Australia, and we have Aussie rules in Australia. And every year, Aussie rules has a has a draft, and about eighty players are drafted. But in the player pool, there's like fifteen hundred people. Oh wow! Because it's open to anybody. So I actually like the fairy tale here that we're going to have lots and lots of people who will register for this draft, who won't get picked up, but they're going to be able to say, 
I registered for the first. I was in the first ever, um, you know, New Zealand NBL draft, and I like that. I think that's. I think that's really cool. Um, so we could have hundreds, hundreds of people, but there'll be eighty-four players drafted. So there will be no official scouting. What will happen is the player will have to submit a highlight reel, and then the teams will decide from there. Is that correct? It's up to the player. I mean, we'll give the offer to players to say, hey, if there's any, if you've got a bio or you've got um, some some uh, highlights that you want us to share with the coaches, send it to us. And we'll share it. But we'll do that once they're registered. There'll be some players who are your, your, top, your top dogs who the coaches will already know um, that, you know, they're not going to have to share anything. But I would say to any player who may not be known, um, that opportunity will be there for them to provide some details and we'll happily share that with the coaches. I think the other thing is if we do end up with you know, hundreds of people registering for the draft, the pressure's not on me. The pressure's on the coaches. The coaches have got some homework to do uh, because there could be you know, there could be a diamond in the rough and I really like the fact that there could be someone who comes out of nowhere um, that wasn't expected and I think that's that's really you know that's a fascinating part in all of this as well so if there's a particular Philippine collegiate player that is interested to join the pool how do they go about it so first and foremost they have to be in New Zealand okay if they're in the Philippines right now um, it's going to be very hard for them to get into the country okay um, so the next thing they would do is from Monday, um, uh, May 25, so from this Monday, they would go to nznbl.basketball, which is the website, nznbl.basketball, and they'll see on there that they can push a button and they will register. They'll get an email from us. Sorry, in that registration, they can, they can say whether they are an amateur or not. So they can actually indicate I'm an amateur because they're protecting their collegiate status, okay? We receive that email. We then email them back and we say, here's the amateur agreement form that you need to sign as an amateur. If you need your college to look at it or any prospective college, give it to them to look at so they can give it the, the tick of approval. And then we would also say to them, if there's any additional information that you want to provide us with, highlights, a little bit about yourself. Um, in the registration, there's height. So we know all of those things as well. Um, and then it comes down to the teams. We give that information to the teams, to the coaches. And the coaches every day for two weeks will get more and more information from us. Every day we will update them with the players who have registered. And then it's up to the coaches. The coaches need to do their homework. And then we get to draft night, which is on Thursday, June 11. That's draft night. It looks like it will be broadcast live on TV. And we will also send out that link to our pay-per-view um, customers right around the world. And then it all happens. There's 84 players who are selected. So, uh, Justin, this is only for this one season i mean they they only play for one season or or is this like once they come in as a part of the team will that be like an ongoing thing so it's for the six-week competition that we have running in 2020 um there's two parts i think to to think about any player who comes in for the next six weeks and plays in this competition also puts their name forward for the future mm -hmm because they're getting that opportunity to get out there. Every game is going to be broadcast on television. Every player is going to be on TV, which is great. With regards to the draft, the, the fascination with the draft has been so big that I have no doubt that when we get to the end of this competition, the teams and the coaches and the league will get together and we'll have a look at what worked mm -hmm. and what didn't work. I think the draft, I went into this thinking the draft will be for one year only because it's different. We're in a different situation. The world's in a different place. We had to change and adapt. Mm -hmm. But there may be some things that we learn. There may be some things that we really like that come out of 
these new initiatives that we look at for the future? I don't know. But it's uh, I mean, personally, it, for me, it's just, it's very exciting as a as a as someone who not not really a very good player, but I I, I really love uh, basketball and the way it's uh, you know it's uh, it, the, the games are, are conducted and especially in the Filipino community, the the, the basketball is is like a it's a town hall meeting where you you get to see everyone. Uh, I don't know, Justin. For short people like us, we love basketball. So, <laughs> so and, and that's, that's, quite, <laughs> that's 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 great. I mean, we we know that there's a big um, Filipino following. Um, I was at the women's international games in in November, as you know, and um, you know the support there for the for the Filipino team was just amazing. Um, if we can get our NZNBL being seen more in the Philippines. Um, and obviously this pay-per-view opportunity is going to be there. Uh, hopefully what it does is it increases the chances or the likelihood of players uh, coming and playing in this competition in the future. Um, and who knows, we may get to a stage um, sooner rather than later where every team here um, has a roster position um, for a Philippines player. Um, oh, yeah. or, or, or or an Asian player. Or, I mean, I'm not sure. Southeastern Asia, I'm not sure. But um, we would certainly be open uh, in the future uh, to talking about that opportunity because I think that the the Filipino basketball community um, are crazy. I mean, they, they love the game. They love the game. Um, and I, I, I want to share what we have here um, and if we can do that and, and provide um, a pathway, uh, I think that's a really good thing. So that's that's something that we want to discuss in the future. Yes, that's why uh, when uh, Carlo, uh, Carlo Espejo, uh, your, your good friend uh, Justin, explained to me, I said, oh, I want Justin to, you know, just have a sort of a informative meeting with the coaches so that, uh, uh, who knows uh, where this, this will, uh, will, will end up. Uh, any other question, uh, Coach Ariel? Do you have a question, Coach? Uh, you were you were there during the Gilas uh, Women's. You're part of the uh, part of the cheering squad. <laughs> you have any question, Coach, or uh, Gerald, or Pastor Jojo, or or Wenny, uh, to Justin? It, it's a good uh, opportunity that while Justin is here, uh, we can ask uh, whatever it is uh, we're connected to uh, New Zealand NBL. Anyone? That's one, one characteristic of a Filipino. We're, we're, we're still a bit shy, you know. <laughs> I don't mind that. I like that. I think it's a very good characteristic to have. I think it's very good. Have, have you like seen that, Justin, uh, some of our players play in the PBA? I mean, online, you could see it on YouTube or, you know. I've seen some games. Um, I think... I think, unfortunately, being uh, Australian, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're brainwashed with the infamous Philippines and, issue, and Australia yes. game. Um, you know, we're all brainwashed with that. So, um, and then obviously, you know, we all follow the, the NBA. So, you know, players like Andre Blatch and, and um, oh, you yes. know, their, their, their connection to having played in the NBA in the past. So, I've seen a little bit. Um, I think one of the things that I really enjoyed last year was, was seeing the women. Um, I, I love seeing them on court and, um, you know, some really, really talented players, fantastic guards. They just need that height, you know, that, that they, they need a couple of forwards in a centre. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the thing that I've noticed since I've been here in New Zealand is there's definitely, um, there's definitely a real brotherhood between New Zealand and the Philippines. Um, not, not only just... Um, from the point of society, you know, a lot of Filipinos living here and we're also seeing Kiwis um, uh, over in the Philippines as well, especially in basketball. You know, there's a couple of coaches over there, Tab Baldwin and, and, um, and also uh, Mark Dickel. And, um, so th so there's, a, there's a connection that's, there's a brotherhood and a sisterhood, I think, between the two countries. And um, I, I like that. I think it's... Um, it's a sign of what basketball can do. Basketball is bringing those two, it's, it's a connector between those two countries. Um, and I think in the NZNBL, if we can um, tap into that and we can make those ties even stronger, 
uh, I think that that's a good thing for the game and for the two communities um, in bringing them together. So it's, a, it's an exciting opportunity. Oh, questions, guys? Questions? Uh, Gerald? Something. Uh, what do you think are the chances, Justin, of a Philippine collegiate basketball player possibly to play next season in the league? Oh, I'd be open to it. I'd, I'd be really open to anything that we can do um, to provide opportunities. Um, and increase our, our level of fans and viewers in the Philippines, uh, I would certainly be open to it. I, I'd love to have uh, a Filipino player uh, rostered to every team here, um, whether that's a college player or a professional player. You know, if, if we've got 10 teams in 2021, I'd love to have the 10 best, you know, Philippines players, Filipinos, um, you know, one on every team. I'd love for that to happen. Um, there's a little bit of work that we would have to do to make that happen. I think that there's some good commercial opportunities, um, you know, with broadcasters in the Philippines and certainly some business people in the Philippines. Um, what I would say to them and encourage them to do is to think outside the square, which is what we do. And if we can make something like that happen, um, you know, we're certainly open for that to happen. Uh, probably the first big test coming up for us is in the six-week competition that we have in the Selves NBL this year, I would expect that our Filipino viewers in that in the, um, the pay-per-view that we have, I would expect the Philippine viewer numbers to be very, very high. I think that'll be one of the countries uh, that really taps into following this competition. When we sit there and we look at where all of our viewers have come from, from around the world... <laughs> It's not going to surprise me at all that the Philippines will be right up near the top somewhere. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've priced it in such a way that it's affordable for all viewers around the world. Um, so I, I think that connection, we're going to see that happen this year just purely by the numbers of people that will tune in to watch. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're, we're also praying for that, that uh, someday or, or this, this season, We'll have a Filipino who is, who is right. playing, yeah, and uh, and that will really justify. And then you see, you know, you know, uh, if you build it, they will come. You know, no doubt. For the man, no doubt. They we're very play. open to it. We are very, very open to it. Is Justin be televised on free TV or cable TV there? So games in uh, here in New Zealand, Sky Sport is our broadcast partner. So our games here are broadcast on Sky Sport. Sky Sport Next, Sky Sport Now, Stuff, which is online newspaper, and uh, and also through Tribe Sport, which is a which is an app on your phone. So there's lots of coverage here in New Zealand. Every game, lots and lots of coverage, um, and, and that broadcast schedule is on our website nznbl.basketball. It's there now. Our broadcast coverage offshore. So everywhere around the world except for New Zealand will be on a pay-per-view platform. So people will be able to go um, to a website, which we will share uh, in a couple of days' time. Uh, they can go on there and they can simply register for a league pass, just the same as what you can with the NBA. NBA, yeah. Yep, you can register for a league pass. We're, we've made it very affordable. Um, and people will get every game, including the, the playoffs as well. They'll get every game over that six-week period. Uh, Justin, which are, uh, what are the seven teams that will be competing? The seven teams um, in order from the top of New Zealand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, the Auckland Huskies, mm -hmm. the Franklin Bulls, who are located in South Auckland, uh, the Taranaki Mountaineers, Mm -hmm. uh, the Manawatu Jets, and then we go into the South Island and we have the Nelson Giants, the Canterbury Rams, and the Otago Nuggets. So that's oh. the seven teams. No Wellington? <laughs> no. So uh, three teams, the Sharkland, uh, the, uh, the um, Southland Sharks, the Hawks Bay Hawks, and the Wellington Saints, they will all come back in 2021. Um, they are sitting out uh, of 2020 for their own reasons. They're, they're different reasons, but effectively they are rebuilding their business 
uh, to come back in 2021. All of our businesses, all of our teams have been affected differently, um, which is understandable. It's been a very, very hard time for everyone. Uh, and we respect that. And they have elected to rebuild their business and get themselves prepared for 2021. Yeah, but uh, that, that, that's good because uh, everything really with the pandemic, everything has changed, you know. That, this totally will be the, the new normal for basketball for the moment. <laughs> and I think that's what I said at the start. If we had have sat down and tried to do something normal, it wouldn't work. We'd be out of business. Our teams will, will be out of business. So we had to do something different. This is what we've come up with. And I think the good thing that's happened is there's a real fascination with what we've done. People are genuinely excited about what we've done. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think that that puts us in a good position. And uh, uh, guys, uh, we've been uh, liaising with uh, Justin since uh, last year. And we've been hoping and we're still uh, looking at the possibility of having uh, either a Filipino team or, uh, you know, uh, something that, that has got to do with our Filipino businesses uh, uh, supporting the NZ NBL in terms of uh, not just for players, also sponsorship and for so many other things. So, and if, yeah, uh, Jesse. Oh, I was going to say, and I think, I think, what people are seeing is we are prepared to think outside the square. We're prepared to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, so those opportunities are there um, for us to be very creative. And again, whether that's a player with every team, whether it's a team mm -hmm. competing in our competition. Um, obviously, we need the, the planes to get back up there and, and uh, <laughs> yes. flying around the world. Um, but we, we, we definitely think outside the square. Um, and we're, we're open to anything. I think for us to grow and be bigger and better, uh, we need to expand our horizons as well. So the opportunities, hopefully, are, are definitely there in the future. So, Justin, is there, if there's a Filipino brand that has a presence there in, in New Zealand, is the league open for a possible team name buyout or league sponsorship? 100%. If there's... If there's a commercial partner, um, we're, we're very uh, fortunate that in the last uh, year especially, we have built um, some fantastic partnerships. We have full full broadcast. Every game's on television. Um, the media, you, you would be experiencing it here, Renee. The media mm -hmm. around the NZNBL is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes. before. Before I came online with you, I've done another news interview for the national news tonight. So um, for any uh, a business, whether based in the Philippines or based here or a connection between the two, um, we, we would welcome their involvement yesterday, not, <laughs> not next year. Um, we've got logo positions available on our court for this competition coming up. We've yeah. got signage around the court available for this competition coming up, starting mm -hmm. in four weeks' time. Mm -hmm. If yeah. there's anybody, if there's anyone who mm -hmm. wants to ring me, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, Justin, uh, you're right. This is the best time to to start. I mean, a, a business in the Philippines or in New Zealand who would like to buy in into this. Uh, Absolutely, league. this is the best time. Mm -hmm. Yep, ring me. <laughs> Any other uh, questions uh, from our uh, panelists, uh, coaches, and uh, Gerald before we let the. Uh, one more, one more. Uh, I'd like okay. to know if ever any ballpark figures that uh, if a brand, if I were to approach a brand and they ask me, how, give me a ballpark figure around how much it would cost for me to be uh, one of the teams for a season? To be a sponsor of the league? Like a, yeah, either a sponsor of the league or possibly if you're if it's open for a team name buyout, for example. Right. Well, I think from a from a sponsorship viewpoint, um, we we probably do anything um, from about uh, fifty thousand NZ dollars up. So depending on what what you you know whether it's branding on uniforms or courts or signage or in the broadcast or, mm -hmm. you know, on the backboards or whatever. So about $50,000 up, remembering that every game is broadcast. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to a team, 
I think in sport, it always comes down to, um, especially if you're buying out a team, it comes down to the position that that team is in. Mm-hmm. If that team needs help, they're li- you're likely to get it cheaper. <laughs> uh, if, that, if that team is a, is a big, strong brand, it's likely to cost you more. Um, I can't really comment on how much it costs to run a team because the world has changed. If I go back to what I knew in 2019, on average, it probably costs somewhere between 250 and 500,000 NZ dollars to run a team. It, it's, it's, it's in that space. Like around 15 million pesos here. About what? 15 yes. million pesos here. Yes. But which, which some of the big companies will be able to, uh, able to do, do uh, yep. Gerald. <laughs> yep. But going forward, I would think in the next few years, it's going to cost a lot less because we're going to have to rebuild our competition. Um, which means, you know, we're all in the same boat. Everywhere around the world, we all have to take a step back and then start building for the future. So I think that um, for any business, now is probably a great time because I think it's going to be a little bit cheaper over the next couple of years to get back to where we were. Mm -hmm. Our plan is that by having this competition in 2020, and again, we had to do it differently, but by getting back out there and playing, what it means is we're going to be able to bounce back quicker than if we didn't play. If we hadn't have played, it would be a long, long road yeah. back. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's true. That's correct. I have uh, two, two questions, uh, Jesse. One sure. is uh, women's team. A- any uh, in the future, they'll have a women's league. And the other one is the 3x3. Is it part of the, in the plans of the NZNBL? Great question. So, coming into this season, into 2020, we had NBL women and NBL men. So, we have an NBL women's league as well. At the moment, that's been put, that's postponed, it's been put on hold. Mm -hmm. We hope to have some women's basketball come back towards the end of the year, once everything gets back up and running. So, it's definitely part of our plan. Again, a lot of money has been lost, so we need to rebuild. The 3X3, uh, we are very close to announcing that there will be an annual 3X3 National League or Cup that will be played for once a year. And that will be played over three or four days. And that will be purely 3X3, men and women, and also on TV. And what we're, what we're looking at at the moment is whether we set up new franchises so our NBL teams can have a franchise, but whether other people can come in and have a 3x3 franchise mm-hmm. as well. That's interesting. Um, mm-hmm. So we're exploring that opportunity at the moment. And then once a year, they would come together for three or four days, all on television, bright lights, And they would play for the New Zealand Championship. So that's what we're looking at at the moment. Interesting. We'll have some more more news on that soon. You've been sitting in on my meetings, Renee. You know too much already. (laughs) (laughs) Any other question from our uh, panelists before we uh, let uh, Justin uh, have his uh, final message? Any other questions? Justin, is is Filipina... Collegiate with uh, is the women's team in your league still op- also open for Filipina basketball players? They can. Um, our our women's teams are allowed to have international players, like our men's teams are. Um, they're allowed to have uh, two international players in their team. Again, we would be open in the future to exploring the possibility of. Um, uh, having a rule that says a Filipino player on each roster, um, we would be open to that. Um, I, I think that it's it's very much like w- what I said with the with the men. Um, if there is an opportunity to um, create uh, partnerships and a, and a sisterhood between our two countries, 
uh, for the benefit of basketball, we would definitely be open to that. Yeah. A any other uh, question? So we can uh, ask uh, Justin, our uh, guest, uh, to give us some uh, final uh, messages with regards to the draft and the New Zealand National Basketball League. Justin. Oh, look, I think the, I think the final thing for me is, um, you know, thank you for having me. Um, we're really delighted that we can bring the competition back this year. We're really excited that for the first time, there's going to be an opportunity for every game to be seen around the world. That's a first. Um, and we're very excited that uh, there is an increased interest in the NZNBL. Um, because there's no basketball in the world at the moment, we're sort of, we're, we're out here by ourselves. And I think that's really, that's really exciting. Um, but what we're trying to do more than anything, whether it's this year or into the future, we want to continue to make sure it's fun for the fans. Um, our players are really important. Our teams and our coaches are really important. Our sponsors are really important. But the most important people are our fans. And if we can build even more fans through what we're doing this year at a time when people want to watch basketball, they want to see live, mm -hmm. real yes. mm -hmm. basketball, if we can do that and build uh, a whole new legion of fans, um, I'd be very happy. Thank you very much, uh, Justin, for uh, clarifying and uh, giving us information. I will share your contact details with the coaches so that probably they can directly uh, address the, some issues with you and Gerald can, uh, can uh, interact with you also. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's really like, you know, we, we really appreciate all of this uh, that, that you're doing uh, for the love of uh, basketball. Thank you very much, uh, Justin. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Gerald, thank, Ariel. Thank you, Justin. Thank and, you, uh, Wenny. Uh, and uh, you'll see all the details for the pay-per-view, um, all the draft rules. It's all there. It's at uh, nznbl.basketball. Just go and check that out. And um, all, all the information's on there for you at the moment. And in the next two days, uh, there's going to be a lot more, so uh, just check it all out there. That'll give you everything you need. Okay, we will. Thank you.